All right, class, so this is just a typical uh, precipitation reaction type problem, and we're gonna need our solubility rules to solve this problem, but let's go ahead and get started. This uh, question is asking us to predict, and that's really the key here, predicting what's gonna happen when I mix these two chemical species together. Predict what happens when a potassium phosphate solution so I'm gonna to need to figure out what that means basically. And solution means sort of dissolved in water. So that's, that's gonna be an aqueous solution. Is mixed with a solution of calcium nitrate. So those are the sort of the, the starting pieces that I'm gonna to, to want to utilize. And potassium phosphate, I know is gonna be K3PO4. And I'm gonna say that that's aqueous. And I'm coming up with this K3PO4 because potassium is K. And I know that potassium in an ionic compound will have a plus one charge. Phosphate, that's a polyatomic ion that is PO4 with a three minus charge. So I'm gonna need three of these potassium ions for every one of these PO4 polyatomic anions to form my, my balanced molecular compound. So calcium nitrate, I know that calcium has a, is gonna have a two plus charge. And then my NO3, so nitrate is NO3, it has a minus one charge. So I'm gonna need two of those NO3s for every one of those calcium two plus cations that I have. This is again gonna be aqueous. I know that sort of because I'm told that they're solutions, but also I could use my solubility rules to figure out that things that contain potassium will be soluble, and also things that contain nitrate uh, will also be soluble all of the time. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to sort of figure out what are the different options for other products that could form. So KNO3 is gonna be my first one. And I'm choosing KNO3 because I'm gonna take the cation from this species and pair it up with the anion from the other species. I've got one potassium and one NO3 because potassium is plus one and nitrate is minus one. The other combination that I can form is calcium phosphate. So my calcium phosphate, here I've got a little bit more complicated um, you know, subscripts here. Calcium three, calcium is a two plus ion, phosphate is a three minus ion. So in order to balance those out, I'm gonna need three calcium two plus ions with two of those phosphate three minus ions to cancel everything out. Now what I need to do is figure out, are these gonna be soluble or insoluble. My potassium nitrate, that's gonna be soluble, aqueous. I'm gonna dissolve that in water, it's gonna be K plus ions, NO3 minus ions. The calcium phosphate, that's gonna be a solid. That's gonna be the precipitate that falls out of the solution. And I can look at my, my rules here. Phosphates are gonna be insoluble, and the only exceptions are sort of group one alkaline metal ions or group one, or the ammonium ion. So that's gonna be my solid that, that falls out of the solution. The next thing I need to do is balance this chemical equation. So if I wanna balance this, I'm gonna do potassium first. So you know, you could go through here, put a three here, so on and so forth. I have already done this, so I know that it's gonna end up being two, a three, a six, and a one over here. So this will be the, the way to balance out this chemical equation. Um, if you need help balancing the, the chemical equation, I've got some other videos, or you can um, just ask. Now I've got my, my balanced molecular equations. This is sort of the, the step one in this problem, and my end goal is to write a net ionic equation for the reaction. So some people can jump right to the net ionic equation. That's totally fine. I'm gonna show the full ionic equation first. So my ionic equation is gonna be where I take these different species and I write them in terms of the ions that they are. So for this potassium phosphate, I've got two of these K3PO4 species. So in total, I've actually got six K plus ions. So six K plus aqueous plus two PO4 three minus aqueous. It's really important that I'm writing in my different charges for those. Plus three Ca2 plus aqueous plus six now, it's gonna be a six, NO3 minus ions. So three times two, so I've got two for every one of these calcium nitrates, and then three of those, so that's gonna be six NO3 minus um, ions. Those are all of my different ionic species that would be present you know, when I first mix the two solutions together. I'm gonna to do my reaction arrow, and then down here I'm gonna write 
the products. So for the products, we just write another reaction arrow so we're clear. We're gonna have six K plus aqueous plus six NO3 minus aqueous. So that's for my KNO3, I've got six KNO3, so six K plus, six NO3 minus, plus, and then this calcium phosphate, that's a solid. So we're not going to break that up because it is a solid. It's gonna be a solid that's in my solution, sort of dropping out of the solution. So in our ionic equation, this is not ions, it's gonna be a solid, it's an ionic compound, but here we're just writing out what ions we have present in the solution. This is not gonna be broken up in the solution, it's gonna be a solid. The next thing we wanna do is cancel out our spectator ions. So I see that I've got 6K plus, 6K plus, 6NO3 minus, 6NO3 minus, so I'm canceling out spectator ions. So we'll just draw little arrows here. These are what we call spectator ions. They show up on both the reactant side and the product side. They don't contribute to the overall reaction that's gonna be done. So we can actually just cancel them out um, when we get to our net ionic equation. So my net ionic equation, it's just gonna show what is actually occurring. So what is actually occurring in this reaction? Two PO4, three minus aqueous, so just bringing these down, plus three Ca2 plus aqueous is gonna react to form a calcium three PO4, two precipitate. And that's gonna be the solid that comes out. So this would be our net ionic equation. Whatever order you, sh you show these, you know, anions and cations, it really doesn't matter. Here I'm just bringing them straight down um, for clarity's sake. If you switch those around, which is what I would normally do, it really doesn't matter um, which order it comes in. But this is our net ionic equation, and that's it.